Welcome to a new episode of The Knitting Yak. Today's guest is Nora Gone. Hi, Nora. Hey, <laughs> how are you? Good. <laughs> I'm really excited to be on this chat with you. I see already a lot of hearts coming on and uh, Olga is uh, there. Julie is there. It's like a lot of people are watching, so no pressure. <laughs> right, no pressure. <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm good. I'm very warm. Like it was freezing a couple days ago and now it's like 90. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same here. I think here is very windy though today. So it's, I could feel the wind and uh, I just went outside uh, with my daughter and uh, uh, it was like sort of like, you know, a bit cold and yesterday was hot. So you never know. It just, you right. know, the time of year that is uh, changing. Spring is coming out there. <laughs> so it's <laughs> yep. think as much <laughs> as we used to. Uh, but uh, uh, how things uh, have changed for you in the last couple of months? You're now you're still staying home, but you you can go out quite easily because of where you are. Yeah, right. Well, New Hampshire itself was on lockdown. We, you know, weren't really supposed to move around much until a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. It loosened up a bit, but the truth is that my life hasn't changed that much. Um, it changed in that a lot of teaching engagements canceled. And so I'm not traveling, not getting on a plane, but um, at home, you know, I worked at home and I worked in my studio here in Harrisville and I'm the only one in this building. So it does, that's not affecting me. It's only 15 minutes from my house. My husband is home teaching high school um, and that's not hard for him because he's teaching computer courses. So it makes sense to teach them. Um, and he's doing all the grocery shopping as normal. I'm very spoiled. Yes. Oh. Um, but things haven't changed that much except slowing down with the traveling. Right. That's, yeah, that's, you know, you do a lot of teaching. But uh, the fact that you can actually go to your studio and move your, your home to your studio because it's just 15 minutes away. Yeah. That's, yep. really, you know, that's, that's really good. It's really nice psychologically. Like I'll be working at home because I think, you know, oh, I'll work at home today. This, this feels nice. And then all of a sudden I hit the wall where I have to change where, where I am and move. And I'm lucky enough to be able to do it still. Right. And I see a lot of people coming on and sending messages as well. So it's great to hear where you're coming from. So let us know where you're coming from. Uh, and I see for people from all over the world, actually, that was very interesting to, to see that. Uh, as usual, I will try to read the question and I will try to, uh, you know, to answer some of the question or ask Nora to answer some of the question. We might not be able to get through all of them. So we do what we can. And uh, sometimes I just like, what? What is the question again? Uh, so San Francisco as well. Look, San Francisco, Seattle, Toronto, Vancouver. It's, uh, I think, is... One of the things that I like about this chat is because there's a, it's a moment where people can just, you know, sit, relax and knit and, uh, and meet uh, designers, uh, learn a little bit more about uh, uh, Mayak and uh, our story, but also the, you know, some of the personal lives of the designers and the people that are coming on uh, because now there's a less opportunity to do that because, you know, as you just said, mm. classes have been canceled. So it sort of, I feel that I'm offering this to bring people more together and, um, you know, so, so far so good. So, okay. <laughs> so you had a lot of the classes, uh, uh canceled. You were supposed uh, to, uh, to go where the next couple of months. That's a good question. Can I even remember? It's like wiped out <laughs> of my brain. Um, I was going to go somewhere in, in Pennsylvania that got canceled. Uh, that was at a nice yarn shop. And oh, this is really bad. I it's I'm forgetting it all. I was yeah, supposed to get, canceled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had some personal trips canceled too. Oh. Like, um, I was planning to go to India for a few weeks, and that had to cancel. That was supposed to be in May, and I was going to go to Yellowstone, and that canceled. Actually, that was combined with a work thing, and um, and then we were going to go to Slovenia, which I was really excited about with my husband's daughter, who's with the State Department. Um, but that's all. That's all canceled. It's it's at home in the garden this this summer. Slovenia was one of my um, favorite places in Europe to travel. I traveled to Slovenia and I went to all of the natural 
uh, parks uh, to the Pittsburgh Park when I was you know, much younger on a you know, uh, hitchhiking and a backpack. So that was an Great. amazing trip that I remember. It's, I hope you can go there because it's really, really beautiful. Yeah, now we're determined to go because it looks so amazing. It yeah. looks so beautiful. I think it's a place where you can just uh, lose yourself if you go uh, out in the, you know, in those, in the woods and the forest that they have. Yep. The beauty, it's uh, incredible. I just saw, uh, oh, so many people are coming on. If I mention all of the names, it sounds like I can't name <laughs> all of the, everybody coming on, but it's incredible. Thank you. Um, so I know you had a lot of, uh, uh, of the trip cancelled, but and as you say, you tend to stay at home and you do your work from home. And you just, right. yeah. So, okay, that's yeah. not changed, uh, changed much, which is good in a way, uh, in a way for you. It's in a way, in a way, it's much easier because I always forget when I book all this travel that, you know, there's a lot of prep before I go away to teach classes, packing stuff, redoing material for class. And then when I come home, I'm not a real extrovert. Um, you know, I do okay, but I'm, uh, when I get home, I have to recover. Like, no okay. matter how pleasant it was, I mean, it's always very pleasant and nice and I love meeting people. But when I come home, I always think I'm going to be able to, to hit the ground running and I can't. I need yeah. a couple of days to recover. I can't design right away. I can't dive right in. I need a, a little time. Wow. So it's now a, I have the time. <laughs> now you have the time. It's actually, yeah. you know, I don't, of course, you know, it's the situation is terrible and uh, what is happening. But me spending time at home, I love it. I'm, uh, you know, I really like staying home. And, uh, and, 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 and when I say that, what I really want to do is stay home and doing nothing. People don't believe me because I'm always like, full <laughs> of ideas and I move around and do you know, 10,000 things. I have 10 ideas and I just want to sit home and do nothing. And now it's not possible. It got so much going on between, you know, trying to work and trying to figure things out, the cooking, the cleaning, the homeschooling. And I, I right. feel that I'm busier now than what I was two months ago. <laughs> It's, it's like, whoa, you know, when is it going to slow down? I guess, you know, it's uh, when we go back to our jobs. I don't know when it's going down. Right. Somebody from South Africa. I think that's the first time we have somebody from South Africa. Oh, wow. yeah. How is it there? Thank you. <laughs> I would, at one point, I was planning to go to Pretoria. Um, yeah. And, but, but we just, that's when we decided to go to Slovenia instead. Anyway, so <laughs> some people get there too. <laughs> So you like to travel a lot? You travel for leisure with your family or? Uh... Um, yeah, so just usually just with my husband, but this, you know, one trip was planned with his daughter and one of the grandchildren. Um, but my husband and I do like to travel. We usually once or twice a year get to travel, oh, okay. which is a luxury, I know. Yeah, well, you know, I travel a lot as well. I'm trying for work, but I travel because I like to travel as well. We try to make as many trips as uh, possible. And uh, hi from uh, Russia as well. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> got, got, got a call actually. And uh, well, let's talk about a little bit about your design process. I mean, you have been at this since you were 14. <laughs> Is that correct? <laughs> well, I started to knit when I was 14, <laughs> but I had my first thing published when I was 17. <laughs> right. And uh, somebody's asking, what are you working on now? I think that was one of the questions that comes a little bit later, but uh, maybe you can just answer that question now. So mostly I'm working on a book. Um, so it's a book for Abrams. They, they've been publishing my books for a while. Um, and I don't know if I want to reveal yet what this book is on. Later, we can talk about the book I finished last year. <laughs> That's coming up. Um, that'll be re released in January. Um, or whenever you want to talk about it. We yes, well, about you know, that. let's go a little bit back. So you started meeting when you were 14. Or you, you're, you're self-taught or somebody taught you? I can't remember. A friend taught me. She was just you. two years older than <laughs> I was. And we were stuck inside in a, on a really hot day, stuck in air conditioning. And she, you know, we want to do something. So she taught me how to knit. And she taught me how to knit on like size four needles with two colors in the round. And I made a hat. Wow. I mean, yeah. I, normally you just learn how to knit. 
you know, the pearl even comes later and then you go straight in. Well, this was, this was just knitting. Well, uh, there must be a little rib on it. So a little bit of purling, but mostly knitting because it was in, in the round, but it still seemed pretty ambitious. Like, yeah, she really got me in there. <laughs> wow. That's good. And you never stopped. Yeah. No, I didn't stop after that. I but went home and went to the county fair and bought wool. Hmm. And I had, some of you will remember this magazine. It was Women's Day 101 Sweater Ideas. And I picked out a simple sweater to do. And then I was really frustrated and, um, and crying. <laughs> because when things go perfectly, I burst into tears. And that's when my mom found the, the book Knitting Without Tears by Elizabeth Zimmerman. I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that book helps a lot of people for sure. I think I think so. A, a big gateway for a lot of uh, a lot of knitters. And you come from an Irish background, correct? So my name is Irish. My father was mostly Irish, but we're many generations in the U.S. So we think of ourselves as Irish, but really it's it's quite mixed. But you think your fascination with uh, cables and uh, you know sailor sweaters and fishermen or sailor fishermen sweaters comes from that? Do you have something inherited in uh, in your? I don't know. Out? That it you maybe comes from cables everywhere. <laughs> I kind of don't think so because I think it has more to do with. Um, you know how exciting it is to see what the fabric's gonna look like after you finish one more row of cables and that keeps you going and you're like, oh, I wanna get to the next exciting cable and the next one. And I think that's what really got me into it. And then there's something about the way my brain works that I really like making up cables and seeing what they would do. Whereas color work, I love when other people do it but I'm, my brain isn't there to make up loads of color work. I've done some and, you know, I'm okay with my own color work, but it's not my specialty. So I, I just really love what cables will do. Maybe the sculptural aspects. I think it's, uh, it probably is. I mean, but also it's geometry and lines and, mm. and, and map. There's a lot of map involved in that. I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it looks beautiful. It looks stunning. That's why, you know, that's why they, so many people refer to you as the queen of cables because you are. It's, uh, and I think since your first book came out, the uh, Knitted Cable Source book. So that's not my first book, oh. <laughs> my recent book. So for those of you who don't know about my first book, look up Knitting Nature. That's my first real uh -huh. book that I poured myself into. Um, I don't know how many years it is old now, but it's from, from the beginning of the 2000s. But the recent cable source book, <laughs> what were you going to ask? Sorry. I was, uh, I was saying that that one, uh, I mean, you can see your passion for cables, of course, there. But I think it's, uh, is, is a, you know, firstly, it's beautiful, you know, just flipping through the pages for anybody. But I think that as a beginner, uh, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think as a beginner uh, cable knitter, is very useful because you walk people through the steps and you give them alternatives as well. So it's not daunting. I mean, you can actually mm. follow through and uh, almost manage to knit a cable. I'm saying almost because <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> oh, you can, you can. So I had a, a goal when I was writing the book that it would be for all different levels, for people yeah. who didn't know how to cable, for people who wanted to do more interesting cables, for designers, and for people who wanted to make up cables of their own. So there are fewer of those people, um, but I tried to mix that in the explanations and everything so that people get an idea of like how my brain was working there. But if you've never worked a cable before, you just start in that first chapter that, um, that has cables in it and it starts really easy and yeah. shows you how you can make it a little different. I'm sure that everybody knows uh, the, the book, but here it is in case <laughs> you, you know, of course I had it. Uh, right. <laughs> in case you're wondering about and it's still available and is uh, is an amazing compendium of, you know, from beginner, you're right, from beginners to uh, advanced knitters, you can find uh, something for uh, everybody there. And uh, it's funny because when uh, we posted a photo of uh, uh, of you for the for the chat, I wrote back to you said you know and asked so what is the amazing uh, sweater that you have on mm. that photo, and you said that that was your uh, top down pullover from yep. uh, from the book from the book. Yeah. So this is it, which is so if I show it, 
But you had a high neck, a high neck on it. Yeah, I love a turtleneck. I, I love what it does for like around here. Anyway, but so it was that sweater, but with a different cable down the front. There's another cable in that book that fits in that spe space very easily. The high neck, like you said, and then a different yarn and color, of course. So how e how easy it is to adapt or to you know to adapt your cables to different designs? So I. I think everything's easy, but I um, I tried to make it way easier by giving the explanation at the end of each design and by um, doing something that I think is kind of new, giving each of the cables something I call the stockinette stitch equivalent. Yeah. So how many stockinette stitches would it take to fill up that space? So say you had a pattern for just a stockinette stitch sweater and you wanted to throw in one of these cables, you look at the cable, if it says SSE, stockinette stitch equivalent of 20, you take out 20 stockinette stitches and you put these stitches in. Now it's okay. gonna be, the cable stitches are gonna be more of them. So you'll have to cast on more. And, but I tried to make it easy right. by giving and, all of uh, those, that, was those that number. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Sorry. Yeah, you just froze for a second. That's why I thought you. Um, somebody was asking if this is a new book, but this is not the new book. This is their sec her second book. It came out a couple of years ago. I think it's even three years now. Maybe. I think it's probably is, uh, yeah, I can't remember now, but it's a few couple of years and uh, uh, at least, but it's still available. So it's a wonderful uh, source book. But so since then, you, let's move on to the next book. <laughs> so now I am writing another book. It's very much like the cable source book, but it's a twisted stitch source book. So basically it's all the stitches that you can make with knits and purls and these right twists and left twists. It's kind of like a mini cable where one stitch crosses over the other, but it's done without a cable needle and just in a special way that it stands up a little farther from the fabric. Um, it's very easy to do and it's just astounding like what all you can do with it. There, there are 130, I think it's going to be 131 um, wow. stitches in it and 15 garments and it's the same idea like you could put different stitches in if you wanted to and all designers are free to use those stitches in their designs just like in the cable source book. I wish I'd put that in the cable source book. Um, cause I've had a lot of people ask me, but that's what it's for, like to pass on those stitches for other people to use. Um, of course I love it when I get a little shout out on, on Instagram or on the pattern, but it's really not necessary. It's, it's not legal and it's not, you know, it's yeah. not legally necessary. Um, it's just a nice right. thing if I get a shout out. But it's a nice to have. And I see a lot, I, I mean, I see a lot of designer or a lot of knitter that try and say inspired by or taken mm -hmm. by, you know, not right. as a, a source, right. which, is, uh, which is good to have. So now for the, for the cables, you, uh, you also offer different methods of uh, the cable needles or how to make those cables. What is your favorite way of cabling? So I like a cable needle <laughs> and I have no patience for knitting with doing a cable without a cable needle. Like the only time I'll do that is if it's like a two over two I, cable and I'm, am I freezing? <laughs> Yes, if it's it's can you, can, yeah, I think you're coming and going and cracking up a little bit. I don't know if the people can hear you well. Can you give me a sign uh, up or down if you can hear Nora? Okay. I, for me, you're cracking up a little bit. We, I am in the country in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, we make it. It's okay. Right. <laughs> I got a thumbs up. There's some thumbs ups. They can hear okay. right oh, now. Keep going. Keep going. Good. Good. Now I can't remember where I was. What was I saying? Uh, you like a cable. You, you don't have no oh, cable. Or... Yeah. Um, I'll only occasionally, you know, if I don't want to get up and get my cable needle, hold a few stitches. But um, I really prefer to use a cable needle. And of course, I have nothing against if you If you want to figure out how to do it without a cable needle, that's great. But I use a cable needle. And um, and you know i have a few special techniques about how to use it they're actually in in the 
the introductory the chapter yeah. of the cable book. Yeah. Uh, my favorite cable needle is just like a double pointed needle. It can be five inch or seven inch, it doesn't matter. But y you can always find one and if you lose it, there's another one. Yes, yeah, yeah, I do have them. Never use them, but I have them. <laughs> I think I can move on to cable. I have a few, uh, you know, few friends like Sarah Solomon and Julie and Olga say, just try, just try, it's not so hard. And I have the book, so I just have to go on in, uh, uh, in, uh, and, and doing that. But uh, you'll you be amazed. About, so the twist, uh, so Sorry to interrupt. How you'll be amazed at how easy it is, and, and you'll wonder why you waited so long. Well, I love that. So, yes, I think that's uh, this, uh, one of the things on my list to try, one of the many things on my list, uh, uh, <laughs> list to try. So this new book that you are um, working on is coming out in January, right? Yes. January 2021. And, uh, um, and hopefully it will be if there is um, bog knitting or, or other events or something that hmm. will be the time that you will release it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and do you have any preview? <laughs> I have one preview with me because it's in the Mayak yarn. And I'm Look really happy that. about that. Um, let's see. Do you want me to try to show it? Yes. Yes, please. Right. I've been looking forward. I've seen the images and they're stunning. All right. I think I'm too close to the camera, so I have to get up and get behind the chair. So pardon me a yes. second. Yes. <gasps> so here is, <laughs> let's go back even further. Yes. I, I want it close enough that you can see the pattern stitch there. Yes. So I, this is it. It's mostly the front and back. So it's a big hexagon, which really ties into knitting nature for those of you that, that have it. The front and the back are identical. Is that enough? People yeah. are going nuts already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is. We, can, we, know, we can't show too much of it because it's coming out in the book. And uh, I'm very grateful that uh, we could show it today. So you've seen it here before anybody else have uh, uh, yes. seen it. I've just seen a of it. It's so, a very yeah. early preview. Yeah. It's a very early preview. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and this one actually brought me to the moment that uh, I, not that I met you or that I've known you, but I actually spoke to you because I felt like, <laughs> is uh, uh is incredible you know we were because we are doing the shows and we are trying to meet designers and of course we know you know i knew who you were and uh um and it was like you know one day my dream was for nora to design something with a yarn, just to put a skein of a yarn in their hands and just have a feedback <laughs> to see how she was feeling about and uh um and i remember so vividly uh, the moment that we were at Vogue Knitting, I was in my booth and I was, you know, it was busy, 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 which is good. And uh, uh, at one point, I just turned around and with the corner of my eyes, I saw you standing just outside the booth with some mustard skeins in your hands uh. there <laughs> waiting for the storm to pass. And I'm like, that's Nora and she has yarn in her hands and, and you were so <laughs> humble and you were so nice. And uh, I was like, you know, sometimes you think that these big name designers and, uh, you know, I don't know, sometimes they are different. They are difficult to approach or difficult to talk to. But the way you were and you were so nice and gentle and say, I think I want to get this yarn. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, and uh, <laughs> I think that was the yarn that you ended up watching with that. And, you know, this is the result right. uh, a while later. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I love that color, although all of the colors in that line are, are pretty much my kinds of colors. Um, I love them. I love that they're over dyed over a little bit of gray. Um, that gives them the tone that I really like. It's, uh, I think this, you like, uh, you know, I think you don't like bright colors. I think you like, you know, <laughs> as in your design, it's more like understated and, uh, yep. and I think that are, our colors are more like natural related and, uh, subtles and, uh, you know, sort of matte colors. I think it goes very well with the weird design. So, you know, we can't wait for January to come and see that book, uh, uh published. 
And uh, so, you know, that, uh, that's absolutely uh, great. I see a long message. Let me see what uh, uh, Cyrilia says. Thought of you yesterday is oh. I made homemade <laughs> front wrap supremes, which are artfully folded into hexagon shape. Ooh, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> Cyrilia and I go way back. Right. We're very close. <laughs> As, uh, um, I had a question about, uh, uh, so, well, you know, you answered the question, a uh, um, couple of my questions, but do you need to relax or to challenge yourself? Ah, some of each, I think. Like, um, I think I designed to challenge myself and, and a lot of things I knit are to challenge myself. And then sometimes just like everybody else, garter stitch looks so good you know just because yeah. you just need to not think a little so stockinette and garter uh start to look really really good and then once i'm rested again then i can do something that i have to think about but i do like to not always be uh attached to the chart so i'll tend to um to do a repeat or two and kind of try to to look at it and know it and not reference back and forth because I'm not great at referencing back and forth. Of course, there are a few patterns that you just have to, like the stag head. Or, um, right. But for the most part, I like to be able to kind of learn it or at least look at what I've already done and know what to do next. Right. And you just talked about chart and that was one of my questions. Uh, I noticed that some of your design only have a chart and sometimes you have the chart written out. Uh, but it's mainly charts. So you, you, you have to make sure that people know how to read charts, right? So I'm trying to do more of getting the, the words there too. Like in the cable source book, almost all of the charts also have the written part, except when the charts yeah. get really, really big and it was just ungainly. But for me, I cannot read the words. I, I can't find my place again. I can't, I can't know, like, if I rip out, where was I? Because I can't check off rows when I've done them. I can't. But a chart is a picture of what you're doing. So I can look at the chart and, and know, oh, look at that mistake I made because it was supposed to cross the other way because the chart is a picture of the right side of your work. I do realize that different people's brains work differently. Yeah. But I am definitely visual and definitely a chart person. It's, uh, I think what I liked about the source book is because I had both, uh, you know, I could just, mm. re you know, read through. I'm more, uh, I prefer, I look at the charts, I learn how to read the charts and everything, but the instruction, the written instructions just had me as well in case I sort of lose concentration where I was, especially if I was doing something else. And, uh, um, but, uh, um, so you said something about a new book as well. So can you say anything at all? So you, this book, the Twisted Stitch is coming out and then you're working on something new. You don't have to say what right. it's about. So, it, um, yeah, it's hard to talk about it without saying what it's about. But um, there are a lot of simpler things in it. Um, uh, it's about or origami inspired things. So it starts, I am saying that, I'm just saying it. It starts with um, squares and rectangles and has things to do with folding. And there's mostly easy texture work. Um, and then it works up to like those elements being in garments where there are more, more normal dressmaker type details in the garment, but it also has the origami detail so it's it's some of each it starts easy and gets harder as it goes on and serena no. says i think you've been talking about this one for years so this yes is something that you had <laughs> wanted to do for a while it seems for a long long time like at least 15 years oh, i've wow. been wanting to write it yeah oh, uh, but awesome. now it seems like an exceptionally good time because a lot of these things need lighter weight yarns and everybody almost everybody it seems is working with lighter weight yarns so some things can be do done in worsted weight and heavier but a lot of them drape really well if they're in like sport or lace or um 
So this is a great time for that because people don't seem to be afraid of those weights anymore. Yeah, it's actually interesting that you say so. And, uh, and I see act the, the difference between the uh, US market and the European market or even the more international like Japanese market. Um, it's incredible how, uh, for example, for us, we have you know a lace weight, we have a medium weight, the worsted weight in our baby yak, and then we have a fingering weight in the baby yak silk, and now we have the DK. But here in the US, it's all about the heavier weight, the worsted weight, whether mm. it's sweat or a scarf, everybody wants that, maybe because it needs up faster. But in Europe, and uh, uh, especially you know, like in Italy, in the UK, and in Japan as well, everybody goes with the lace weights. You know, they love a nice mm -hmm. lace weight, whether it's a scarf or something lighter, softer. And uh, so it's interesting to see how we even have to gear our production between the two mm. different continents uh, and see how one pattern might do much better in one country, not because of the name of the designer, but because of the weight of the yarn as well. So that's uh, mm. uh, interesting to see. But I can see how, you know, people are getting, you know, I, I guess more advanced knitter, they, they start preferring the lighter yarn as well because it's more versatility probably mm. as well using them. I sort of felt like after people started doing socks that the fear of the smaller yarn kind of went away and and loads of shawls are done in lighter weight as well. Yeah, yes. Talking about shawls, you are well, shawls versus garments, sweaters. So you really like to design uh, pullover and cardigan mostly, is that correct? I do. I, I empathize with everybody wanting to knit shawls and have them not fit and have that that's fun but my heart my designing heart <laughs> lays lies with um cardigans and pullovers and like that's what i want to knit and that's what i want to wear and that's what i want to design mostly what, what about uh, uh, top down versus seamed or you know in pieces versus circular what is your pre preference or do you do a little bit of everything and these days i'm doing a little bit of everything so I started, you know, way back with Elizabeth Zimmerman and Knitting Without Tears doing circular bottom up. Um, and then when I was working commercially, like for yarn companies, Burnett and Barocco, like before I was design director there years ago, um, everybody wanted flat in pieces and seamed. So for many, many years, that's what I was doing. And um, for me, it's much easier to design flat um, and do one piece at a time. Something goes wrong. Even when you're knitting, something goes wrong. You're only ripping out a small piece. Um, so in a lot of ways, I prefer that. But these days, so many people are loving top down that I kind of got myself into it. So um, as you know, I have like a whole group of patterns that's top down with cabled yokes. Um, yeah. And I think more and more about how could it be top down and not so hard to set up at the top? Like that's my main objection about top down is how fussy the beginning has to be. If you want the back neck higher than the front and you want to set up patterns and you're doing increasing and short rowing and, and all at once, I would like it to start in a more easy way. So I try to figure out how to do that. Right. Oh, that's okay. That's interesting. And uh, um, I was good. So you worked also with, uh, you know, several, you know, many, I would say probably several uh, yarn, yarn brands and, uh, uh, mm. you know, with this company and smaller company and you have designed for many different companies as well. And then you have your self published uh, uh, design. What is the balance? Can you find or why you do one or the other? What is the, the balance that you find between one and the other? So I'm always trying for balance and I have no idea how to get it, right? So after I, I was the design director of Barocco and after I left because I wanted to spend more time with grandchildren and find balance, uh, um, I thought that I'd be doing a lot of self-publishing more than I've done, but people keep asking me to do things and then there are projects that seem really interesting. And I like being focused on a project like that and having someone depending on me. That works really well for me. Um, right. So it turned out that I actually didn't 
does I haven't in the last six years designed that many things independently, like not for somebody else, not as a project that started with someone somebody asking me to do a group of patterns. Hmm. But do you think that now will you will anything will change? Do you think you want to do more self publishing, or you will still continue on the same uh, uh, the same model? I'm not sure yet because right now the concentration is all on this book. Like it's going to have, I think, 36 items and I'm wow. not as far into it as I should be. Like that happens every time though. Like okay. it does. <laughs> um, so all my concentration is, is on that right now. All right. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, uh, as usual, when we do this chat, and I can't believe that we only have 20 minutes left. This is oh. you know, fine by. Um, and what I, what I do, I just pick some uh, design that I personally love. And then, and I always say, this is a personal choice. It's not the designer choice. It's what I would love uh, to knit or have somebody knit for me, <laughs> which is probably <laughs> the case. <laughs> and uh, and things that I loved. I mean, you know, looking at your design was an impossible choice because you, I love them all. And uh, but I also try to to stay more in the in the area of your self published uh, uh, mm. patterns as well, just to make sure that if we offer a kit on a yarn, you know, I don't want to uh, create problem to uh, anybody. So the first one up is actually uh, the shifting sands pullover that you published in the making uh, uh, magazine number seven, which is amazing. It's an amazing uh, uh, magazine. I really <laughs> love this, uh, uh, this magazine and you have it. Yeah, I have it. Can you see the pattern stitch? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just show a picture while you show the pattern. Okay. So can you say a few things, like a few words about it? I love the, they're not, the, I, well, I love the cabling, but uh, it's, uh, it, it almost yeah. seems easier than some of the others that you've done or not. No, no not. So usually not. I'm the one to say, oh, it's easy. Like it's easier than you think. But I actually found this pattern stitch a challenge. It's hard oh. to memorize. Like you have to keep looking at the chart. That said, the chart's not that big. Um, so you do the repeat over and and over. But I loved the theme. Like as soon as they said it was desert, I thought of yeah. the the lines that you get on shifting sands, and I wanted to reproduce that in cables because that's that's yes. what's easy for me. Yeah. Like, and that's what the challenge that I like. Um, I'm trying so, to go and add a photo of it, and you're also on the back. Yeah. I mean, just the details. I yeah. love. The, so you can see, yeah, that there are cables that are thick that travel over, and then there are cables that are seem sort of thinner and they start small and travel over and then taper off. Um, and so that was my approximation of literal shifting sands. It's, it's I mean, this, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, all of the patterns in the, in the magazine are beautiful, but this really caught my eye. And I was very happy that we finally had a yarn that we could make this with because we didn't have a, a DK weight uh, to make this, but you know, we finally uh, had it. So uh, we put some kit together on the website, and I have a lot of uh, uh, stores that sell the Tibetan cloud, which is our mm. decay, the natural, uh, the natural color. And sorry, that's it. So this is the natural uh, wild daisy color, and I like the idea of uh, you know something like that, or even you know a little bit darker. I'm just trying to go with tones that you probably mm. <laughs> those go with sand. It makes yeah. sense. Yes, so you yeah. know it would be nice in uh, uh, in uh, in this kind of uh, uh, in this kind of color. So I think that would be a really nice uh, um, a really nice pattern to do in uh, in our yarn as well. And uh, um, and the next one is uh, um, ladybug, ladybug. So I have that too. Let's see what we can do. Do I have an Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, you have I can't it. see it and myself at the same time. Wait, there. <laughs> you can, there you yeah, go. if you put So this is Ladybug, and uh, it's more in a worsted weight, correct? It is, yes. It is. So, and, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. So this pattern, there's a pattern for Ladybug just as it is in this weight, but you also can make it in a lot of different weights. 
from um, DK to Aaron by buying the pattern interchange, which has, oh. it has four different cables, this one included, and you get to customize it. There's a worksheet, you have to do a little bit of math, but it's really easy, <laughs> really, it really is easy. Um, so if you had a different weight you wanted to use, um, by the interchange instead of the ladybug. I just saw uh, a right. good friend that says that she would love to knit one of these. So I'm just sending you the yarn so you can knit it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That works out. Yeah. And uh, um, when I saw that, you know, because you had the, um, you had the, we had the worsted way, which is one of the options and also the DK. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, we went, we tried to stay with the ladybug or with a little bit darker with the, uh, which is the burgundy color, which is mm. something similar to what you have on and our night flower, which also is a nice shade. That's gorgeous, and yeah. Earthy tone and, uh, uh, but you know, I think that would be a nice yarn, very soft to make those cables. And one of the good things about, and I think you saw it in yourself with the baby yak, uh, um, the, our baby yak really holds the stitch very well and the cabling comes out uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful. I it's, think that uh, in that weight, the cables really show beautifully. That that's a great choice. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, that was my. I I left. You know. Of course, we have more designs to talk to. Uh, my favorite. I mean, since I saw this coming up uh, pattern, I was like, oh, I need this. I need it so badly. I would just <laughs> wish somebody would just mm. give it to me. Is the circlet shrub? Right. Is that how you call so unfortunately, um, somehow in my travels, I have lost my sample of mm. the circlet shrug, um, which was difficult when I was trying to teach um, what I called punctured cables. It has a double yarn over in the middle of the cables, um, so which gives a, a big hole in it a ni ni in a nice way. Um, and to not have that sample was really disappointing. But I do have the picture. See that's, there. Also, yeah, that's also in Making Magazine originally, correct? It's in Making. So yes. this is the issue. It's the issue about dots, about circles, yeah. what they call it, dots. Yeah. Um, and then there's a picture also of kind of the fabric, if you can see that. It's it's stunning. I mean, I I just, I saw, you know, when I saw that, I'm like, whoa, you know, somebody knit that and I think I've seen one uh passing by as well at Vogue knitting at one year the year that mm. came out. and it was incredible so I'm really you know I'm so pity for your part so you have to knit another one basically I have to you know I knit the original sample too yeah. and um I can tell you that the cable is time consuming um I found it a nice challenge, but I did everything I could to make the rest of the pattern easy. So the, the part, it's, it's really a big rectangle. The, the fronts are rectangles, the back are rectangles. The only shaping is in the ribbing that's, that's in the neck line. Like you can see that that front rib is shaped a little, but none of the cables, they're not shaped into, except at the back of the neck where I gave a little chart. But, um, but you don't have to think very, very much about that, about working into the cables themselves. I want to keep that part easy. And it's, right. it, it fits almost everybody. So the size that's shown is the middle size. There are three sizes. Um, and a lot of people fit in it. Like on me, it was the right size. On the size four, it was the right size. I think maybe up to 50 bust. And if you're larger than that, there is another size. Oh, that's good. I think yeah. I like those things that you can just put, you know, because it's good for different uh, for different seasons. Sorry, <coughs> and uh, you can overlay them. Uh, mm. But it's a dress. It could be more dressy or less dressy. I really, really, really loved it. And uh, because it's a DK, we thought that it would really work well with our, you know, dark. Uh, uh, what's the color? Gentiana. <laughs> oh, nice. So um, someone I just saw said, "Does that mean it's done in pieces?" So it's done in one piece. And um, so there are no shoulder seams. And even the ribbing is done as you go. So you have the ribbing on its size needle. So picture two circular needles. You have the ribbing on one circular needle, the collar ribbing. And you have the other 
you have the main part of it on the bigger circular needle and you work them both at once and as you know you work across the bigger needle and as soon as you get to the ribbing you drop that and you work with the smaller needle so all you've got is two little side seams and you leave enough open at the armhole so that it's comfortable for you but not too big because if it's a fairly snug but not tight then it folds over your shoulder really beautifully and if it's too big it'll start to stand up and look like a bad 70s kind of vest and you don't want that you want it to go over your shoulder and be flattering yeah it all sounds so easy peasy when you say it it's just, <laughs> it's just a question of actually making it but uh, uh and in another, I don't know why I chose all of the making magazine, but I you know I think I love the you know uh, you have one of the uh, one of the pattern that the stag head pullover. The, which uh, one? <laughs> Sorry. Can you oh, see? Oh yeah! Oh, you didn't tell me to pull that one out. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I just remembered that uh, a few minutes we come in on the chat because uh, um, a good friend of ours knitted this uh for one of the um Rheinbeck uh, uh, time and it was so stunning and uh, i thought at least i have to talk about it it's uh, because it's one of your you know is the stag head pullover and it's uh, it's amazing just it's just because you love deers or what was no, it because again because their theme was fauna so you know some kind of animal yeah. so um I just thought of the stag head right off the bat and I could not get it out of my head. Like that was it. She's like, you don't have to take it literally, Carrie said. I'm like, yes, I do. I have to take it literally. And it it. Yeah, I've seen some great variations on that. Like people made pillows and oh. um, some knitters put it on the back of a cardigan. So like for a man, well, actually for a man, the pullover is great. But if you um, if you like a cardigan better or don't want it right on your chest, you'd rather have it on your back, then put it on the back. Yeah, I think that's how I see I saw it actually. The friend Ooh. of mine knitted it that way. Julie knitted it that way with the with the you know with the stag on the back. And I right. think and I think it was uh, was uh, was a cardigan. Um, and uh, I just want to you know add a couple of uh, uh, things. Uh, what we what we do, you know, of course, we upload some of these bundles on a website so that you can go, you can see the yarn choices that I made, and uh, uh, in in the yarn that we chose, you know, is all about you know mm -hmm. our choices in this case, and so you can see your sizing, how many skins you need, and everything else. But do and go support your local yarn stores. There are mm -hmm. many yarn stores right now; they need your help. And as much as we do, so it's your choice. But there are a lot of yarn stores that carry my yak yarns that uh, can really do with your help uh, uh, right now. So go out, look how many skins you need. Uh, if you decide to do this pattern, Nora's pattern with our yarn, and and search a website or just email us or DM us. There was another one that I really liked that uh, I think was the the Mulani. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Is that Mulani? Now I don't recognize which one it is. There you go. You know, oh, don't talk about that one. Mulaney. So that's <laughs> an that? Irish name. Um, I named it after, it was my, it's my husband's mother's maiden name. I never met uh, her. She died before I met him. Um, but that's why it's named that. And that's what's hanging behind me, which I kind of thought would show, but won't. So I have to get up to get it. Sure, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you see, yeah. I was wondering, I was going to ask you what that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a little shawlette kind of thing. All the fancy business is in the front there. It's stunning. This is really another really beautiful, uh, and there's a lot of yarn overs there. In the, yeah. Is that... There are a few yarn <laughs> overs. It's got everything, right? It's got textures. It's got yarn overs. It's got cables. Um, and it's got that little loop at the bottom which I kind of, I love how it goes with the cables. And is that I-cord at the bottom or? Something? Yeah, a little I-cord loop kind of started the whole thing and it grows from there. Wow, and I didn't even read the pattern. Look at that, I even recognize that. I'm making Very good. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up as a knitter. And uh, that one also, I, I, I just have a note here. With, and that was also in a, in a DK yarn, so. Yes. Uh, you know, any color. Of course, I have to pick some of the, my favorite colors. 
and uh, this is the calendula and botton d'oro, which is our beautiful yellow. Uh, but any color would be, you know, really nice, uh, uh, really nice in that. And I think it's only a couple of skeins that you need. So it's a nice, uh, nice small project, but right. challenging because as you said, I think you just crammed every single thing in that shawl. <laughs> right. And in the beginning, and then once you're off to each um, sort of wing there, it becomes very easy, very right. honestly easy. Yeah. I think I always want you to come to one of your classes, but I think they've been, you know, more advanced. Uh, you do have some about knitting classes coming up, or you already? Or, or you? No, I I'm not doing this next batch. Um, somehow I I need to get back to concentrating on the book again. So I did do that first batch, um, but it it takes a lot of energy. Again, the same like prep and recovery. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that much shorter with the digital and especially because the digital was so new yeah uh somebody's asking about the name of the pattern uh is the well if i pronounce it i pronounce it on italian way so it's mulani <laughs> and if we uh, pronounce it in the more american way it's mulaney <laughs> it sounds better in italian to be honest <laughs> It's, it's very Irish. This is a very <laughs> Irish name. <laughs> it's M-U-L-L-A-N-E-Y. I even spelled it right. So, yes. So, yes. <laughs> I just had written down here. Um, I can't remember what I wanted to say, but oh, do you have, I'm sure you don't, but you have one favorite pattern or a pattern that you always wanted to design and you did it? You No, of course no. not. <laughs> <laughs> do you now that no. Do you remember all of the patterns that you designed then? No, especially the old ones, like things will pop up on Ravelry and they'll have my name on them and I'll be like, really? I do. So usually, obviously those aren't the ones I'm as proud of as others, but um, I've designed a lot, a lot of sweaters. Like I think, well, they're over a thousand on Ravelry and they're loads that never got there from my many years of designing. Right. Um, so I, I don't remember all of them. So really it has a question. <laughs> oh, what are you watching this day? Yeah. yeah. There you go. So border town, it's, um, this Finnish detective and he's very moody and kind of strange, but you, you have to love him. And do you have a shoot Stalin plan location for the new book? Um, we, um, we're working on that. And it'll probably be in New England, probably probably in Rhode Island. But um, we we actually think we want to use the same photographer that we used for the book that you still haven't seen, the, the Twisted Stitch book. Um, anyway. I think I want to watch. I think my husband is watching Border Town too. I haven't started yet. I, you know, he always managed to watch things before me and then I fell asleep on the couch. And... Um, uh... I'm trying to catch up uh, as well with a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of TV and uh, Seaside Hotel, a Danish show. You love it. Okay. Thank you for the input, Cyrilia. But I think that's it really, because otherwise we get, we, we, we will get uh, uh, cut off completely. Oh. Uh, thank you, Nora, for doing thank this. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to January, of course, to see the book and uh, hopefully we will be able to meet up uh, in person, uh, in person then. Oh, I really hope so. That will be fun. But thank you for your time, Nora, and uh, have a wonderful rest of the week. And thank you, you all too. for watching. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you all so very much for watching us. See you at the next episode.